Well, February is almost over. Don't mind this guy. He really thought that uh, he would be able to get this video out in February and not halfway through March. And you would imagine that this would be Enshrouded week one. Well, let me tell you, I did play Enshrouded for a whole week and I also played Pal World for a whole week. And both games kind of left me with a little bit of a meh. Feeling. So yes, definitely, I could have returned to Valheim and wrapped that up, but for some reason, I felt in the mood for a more single-player experience, a more RPG story, if you will. So that's why today we are doing Punch Club the movie because I managed to beat this game in three recording sessions and if there's anything that I want to do with this channel is do five recording sessions and see how far I get along in the game. If I beat it in less or in five recording sessions it will turn into one really big video if I do not finish the game in five recording sessions, I split it up as a weekly series as I did with Valheim. As with any game, as you boot it up, you have some settings here that you have to mess with. Obviously, the, the sound was way too loud, so I had to turn that back down. And then I kind of fumbled with the resolution here because I like it when things are borderless full screen, and this game just didn't have that option. Next up is selecting the difficulties. We have three difficulties to choose from. I just went with normal, though I was kind of tempted to do easy because I later learned that on easy your stats don't digress and I would have loved that to be honest. But I went with the medium difficulty because that is what the game was intended for. Next up we get to see the motivation of the character, the backstory that leads us to become the greatest fighter of all time. Our dad is brutally murdered right in front of us by a mysterious man. Just to, also with a gun. In a world where your fist is very mighty, you get killed by a gun. I don't think that's very cool, but our dad tells us to be stronger than him. And so we end up becoming, or we end up having that dream, having that goal and trying to fulfill that. We wake up from a phone call with a person named Frank telling us to go do some work. There's also something about a newspaper being on the table, but we make our way to the garage first to do some basic workouts, starting off with the push-ups. We realize very fast that workouts make us hungry. So we make our way back to the living room to eat some food from the fridge. There's two things in the fridge. There's the frozen pizza and the soda. Now, I don't know why I should have eaten the frozen pizza now that I have all the knowledge of the game, but I went for the soda instead for some reason. Our character then wants to go look at the newspaper to see what this job is all about, and then it opens up the world menu or the city menu, if you want to call it. It gives us the option to travel by bus or by foot, and seeing as I only have $35, I don't think it's wise to spend $6 going with the bus. So I end up going to work by foot. And so on the way to work, we get greeted by these bikers, by these gang members, and they show us what the combat in this game is looking like. A little paperclip that seems high off his ass is telling us how to do battle. I'm a little bit skeptic looking back at it now, but you know what? When I was just starting up this game, I didn't think twice about taking hints from this high ass looking paperclip. We have the basic overview here. We have our health, our stamina, our stats, which are divided into strength, dexterity, and stamina. That's something that gets picked up later. And as you can see, his stats, his stats are way, way higher, so I'm obviously set up to lose this fight. And then there are active abilities, which I can choose two from. And there's also the fighting style over here, I think, that you can choose from later as well. And you can see the perks 
of the person you're fighting. You as a character also have a lot of perks which get progressively unlocked, and that list would be hell long so your perks don't show up here. But trust me, you do have them. In this game, you always need to have that entire bar filled, which makes it a little bit confusing to me because certain enemies will drop the amount of active skills they have to serve their stamina needs. As a player, you cannot do that, which I think is unfair to developers. I should be allowed to drop active skills if I want to. But anyway, I choose the punch and the block, which are the only two active skills that I have, and I try and fight this character or try to fight this first battle. With this first fight, it is very apparent that everything is stamina based. So the punches do stamina, blocking the stamina, and obviously if you go out of health, you lose as is very apparent here but i'm set up to lose this first fight anyway so that we can meet up the next character which is mick over here he is going to some be somewhat of a mentor to us and apparently this fight even though we got really really hammered just just gives us the potential he sees potential in us meeting mick allows us to have more encounters and more options throughout the day First up, we can visit Mick's house, which is over here, so that we can continue this little storyline, see what he can do for us. And then we also have the grocery store over here, where we can buy food that we put in our refrigerator that keeps us going. Seeing as I still have not made any money, I choose to walk to Mick, and he tells us that he can make us a champion and brings us to the amateur fight league that is hosted by someone called Silver in his gym. Well, it's not hosted by him, but it is taking place in Silver's gym. Forgetting about the grocery store, I make my way to Silver's gym so that Silver himself can talk about the gym and, and really make himself shine. Silver tells us that we can join the amateur league and our next goal is to rank fifth in that amateur league. And then he asks to spar, which I'm like, you know, sure, maybe, maybe this is the type of game that you can actually get some stats from doing battle, but I was completely wrong with that. This was another fight that I was destined to lose, but I kick at Silver's ass a lot of times later on. A feature that is also in this game is that fights are going by rounds. At the end of the specified rounds, which you can find here at the top, the person with the highest health wins. So it's not always about beating the guy until he's absolutely out of health. Sometimes just having more health in general is also the way to win. Before the end of round three, I end up losing to Silver, and with that, he gives us access to his gym. But I do have to pay $10 in order to get access to that. I sign up for the Rookie League, and the next fight is in two days, which gives me two days to train. As I don't know how difficult it is to make money in this game, I do end up going to the gym to get some exercise in. But my ass gets hungry very fast because I have I just had soda today. Could have had frozen pizza, but no, I went with soda. I look at the vending machine and realize that everything is hella expensive here. But I do end up buying myself a protein bar. I don't know why. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but it allows me to keep training for a little bit longer. But I do end up hungry once again. Not thinking much of it, I finally head to work. But then I realize that you can't work if you're either too tired or too hungry. I make my way back home and then I go to the fridge and eat the frozen pizza that is in there. Having regained a little bit, I figure that I might as well get my stamina back up and I go to the couch to sleep and fill up my stamina, but that instantly makes me very hungry once again. This brings me to another feature in this game that I talked about a little bit earlier, and that is that your stance will degrade with every day. I feel like every day is a little bit excessive, but I do get it in reality. If you don't train, then your muscles will degrade at some point. 
So I do get where the mechanic comes from, but as you can see, I trained a certain amount and then I lost a certain amount as well. So basically you have to make certain that you want to keep training in order to keep ahead of that curve, because if you have to skip training for at least one day, you're going to fall behind and you're going to work so much harder to get all those stats back, which... I think is wild. It's it's one of the systems that I don't really like about Punch Club, but in the second game, this is not a problem anymore. So I think I wasn't the only one that complained about it. With this frozen pizza eaten and no more food in my fridge, I make my way to my job in order to start making some cash. With this job, you actually get some strength points, which I think is really nice. You don't get that from any other job. So I I work and I get $50 paid out, which now allows me to have 60. So now I have some cash. So I make myself to the grocery store and fill up that fridge as best as I can. Frozen pizza for sure is my favorite snack. So we're going with that. I think is the most bang for your buck compared with everything. I buy three of them. I think you can only have seven things in your fridge in general. With that, now that my fridge is a little bit filled, I have the first fight in the amateur league. Our stats are the same, but if my memory serves, I end up losing this one. Seeing as the fights on 1x are a bit too slow, I eventually do move to 4x to see if there's any kind of difference. I do end up liking 4x a lot better because some of these fights can take a really long time. I'm actually very wrong. This first fight in the amateur league, I do end up winning which is great and now it allows me for another feature of this game which is the skill tree i got three skill points for winning that fight which i use to spend it in kick in dodge and i do not have points for anything else seeing as the skill tree unlock i take my time to look a little bit at the other type of fighting styles that, that there are but I don't have much to, to look in that as everything is long. So I once again make my way back to the gym, get some protein in me and start training. The training is very short lived as I am hungry AF, but I do sign up for another fight in the rookie league and head my way back home. At home, Mick calls me because he saw that I entered my first fight. He left a training manual on the desk for me to tell me that it is not possible to focus on all three stats equally. You have to make a little bit of a sacrifice. Going through the journal, as you can see here, I figure that the fight style that I prefer the most is going to be an agility and a str and stamina fighting style because training agility focuses on dodging enemy attacks and using counter skills. If there's anything that I like in a game is where you can dodge everything and become this invulnerable behemoth that dodges everything and does a bunch of counterattacks. And that is my goal for in this, for in Punch Club, is to be able to dodge everything and just dish out as much counter damage as I can. I eat all of my frozen pizzas because I want to get that hunger up so that I can keep training for longer. Seeing as, <laughs> as seeing as money is so short as I have $9, I figured, you know what, I do have to the work. So those frozen pizzas are basically going back to making me money. I managed to get two rounds of work in, but sadly I am too tired and I have to go back home in order to get my stamina back up. But that brings me to the next issue that now my hunger is back down and I, there's nothing in my fridge. Which brings me to the cycle of this game, which is the grind of having enough money so that you have enough food so that you can keep working or keep training. And that is the grind of this game. Apu tells me about a, a pizza cafe that I can also work at. I, after filling up my fridge with seven frozen pizzas, I get to meet Cassie and he also offers me a job to deliver pizza for him. The pizza job gives me a little bit less money than the worker's job. So I don't know what the real benefits are of delivering pizza. 
But seeing as I have some money, I tend, I, I figure that I might as well spend and eat some pizza here as I make my way back home to eat up on some frozen pizza so that I can go to my garage and do some more working out. Before I get to work out, I am hit with another fight in the amateur league and I tend to go with the two new skills that I acquired, which are kick and dodge instead of punch and block. This fight isn't looking all too good and I end up out of stamina a few times. When you're out of stamina, you get knocked down and that causes a huge amount of damage. And that also makes me think that that's potentially something that I want to focus on. But sadly, the second fight in the amateur league uh, ends up in a defeat for me. Seeing as it already brings me back to the gym, I figured, you know what, I have some money. Let's go in here and let's spend some time training here now that both my stamina and my hunger are well managed. After a workout session on the treadmill and on the jump rope, I make my way back home and I get greeted by a weird looking briefcase. After the character looks at the briefcase, I can look at it and interact with it again. And then the world map opens with a with a very strange green filter around it, basically bringing me back to my home and it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense as of yet. Going back in the grind, I make my way back to Cassie and try the delivering pizza job. As you can see, it only gives me $30 and there are no stat gains. At least with the drilling job, you get some, some strength stat, but not with this one. So what the real benefit of the pizza job is, I don't know. Maybe your stats digress uh, uh, shorter. Like you end up losing a little bit of happiness, stamina and hunger every time that you do a jump. So maybe those digress shorter or are less quickly when you end up doing the pizza job. Not really knowing what to do next, I make my way back to Mix to ask if he has some food to share with me. Sadly, he only shares food with you if you are completely out of money though that doesn't matter if you have food in your fridge if you have food in your fridge and no money and you ask mick for a meal he will give it to you regardless but there are limited uses on that one because eventually he tells you that he won't help you much longer because even him even he doesn't have money growing on trees for you. After training long and hard on the jump rope, my stats are now two in agility and two in stamina. So I figured that this time around, I'm ready for this fight in the amateur league. With the right stats and the right mind style, I win the second match of the amateur league, giving me five skill points, which allows me to just unlock a whole bunch more. I go for tactics learner, which now allows me to see more stats or see more things when uh, when I fight people. So I guess that's kind of handy. Having money is really important. So I go to my job and end up with $213. But sadly, this game doesn't want you to have too much money in your pocket. So I have a thug trying to, to wrangle me out of it. And I don't know why, but I ended up not going for a fight and this character ends up giving, taking half of my well-earned money, setting me back a hundred dollars. After this encounter and losing half of my money, I make myself back home where the suitcase is once again glowing. Tapping on it, it tells me that I need to go to the grocery store, which I end up doing. I arrive there and Apu tells me that the grocery store just got robbed by people in animal masks, bandits in animal masks, which is a kind of strange, but it is the beginning of a puzzle. It is the beginning of a crime fighter. One of the things that in hindsight is something, and if you don't want spoilers, you should skip ahead right now, but they stole the cat food. They stole the cat food right here. And if we, if we, if we, if we go back a little bit, if we rewind a little bit, then the cat, there's, there's the cat there when the, the suitcase first appears and he says, the cat, he says to the cat like, oh, I know you want food. I'm hungry as well. There is a link there. There is a link to these two crimes, which I didn't see at first. 
After resting up a bit after the heist, after the robbery at Apu, I make my way over to the pizzeria to Casey and see that he has a option to ask for the special pizza. I then have to go into the sewers to deliver this pizza to a very suspicious looking alligator. Sadly, I am no match for this alligator and a few glitch moments later, I am back in the pizzeria to continue my job of delivering pizzas, which I'm still not certain what the benefit is. In order to make certain that I'm in tip top of shape for this fight, I eat two pizzas to get my health back up and then I move to Silver's gym just to get my stat points a little bit higher because they degraded back into the ones. Sadly, I am a no match for this contestant, which means that I lose and I have to just try and be better. After the fight and after losing once again, Silver gives me a little tip on how I can potentially gain the system a little bit by going to a person that he calls the potion vendor. Now, it sounds shady as all hell, but coming into this store, I do find the potion vendor and I'm like, you know what? Let us buy the blue potion, the agility potion. For some reason, I thought those stats would be there all the time, but just like anything in this game, those stats also degrade over time and you lose all the effect from them. After being on the grind in this game, so working, eating, training, I get a phone call by, I assume, Frank, that tells me that I can buy other gym equipment than just the push-up mat that I currently have, which is very, very enticing, but I, I just leave that to the side and focus on training for a little bit more. Apu cannot catch a break because on day 14, I I go back to the store because I am in desperate need of some groceries. And there is this thug that wants all of the precious money that this grocery store have. Obviously, I cannot let that stand and I fight. I fight this thug and I manage to win after a big, big losing streak in the amateur league. Sadly, defending Apu from this thug doesn't come with any benefits besides that he's really nice to me and gives me compliments all the time. So. I guess I'll take that obviously and also my fucking neighbors. The neighbors two stories up are, are doing that if you can hear that noise. Two stories up are banging noise are making those banging noises. It's it's insane to me. Anyway, I keep going and I make my way back home and then the the briefcase is glowing once again. I go there, it brings me to the newly discovered store where the potion vendor is and he tells me that he lost a laser. Doesn't really want me to report it or anything because he doesn't want people to know he had a laser with him, which is fair, it keeps up with his shady practices, but after that, I just continue on my way. After a bit of work, I do another fight in the Amateur League and I win by just an inch. I have about five health left. After exchanging a lot of blows and kicks and dodges, I end up victorious. And then I am greeted by a very friendly fellow who wants to be my friend? He saw me fight and now he wants to be my friend. How nice is that? After drinking a few beers with this new friend, I end up at a bar where I meet Tyler, who tells me that one of the ways of self-improvement is by going through street fights. I'm not really too sure what that all means, but I get the, the new goal that if I win five street fights, that I become the champion of the street of some sort. So that's that's a new goal added to the list after being back on the grind training working doing all the essential things in order to climb the amateur league ladder I'm back against the fight with the one two three person if you don't know what I'm talking about It's one strength two agility three stamina but after a long and hard fought battle against this guy i managed to knock his stamina out quite a few times and i end up victorious for the second time in a row in this amateur league do you do you think my luck do you think my luck is improving 
I don't really know. I've lost quite a few fights and I think I will lose quite a few more trying to climb this ladder. After the fight, obviously I have more skill points to spend, but I want to highlight this one. I want to highlight this, this particular attack, which is called skip attacks. I was way too late into purchasing that ability. I'll showcase when I buy it later on in the video, but this that singular ability is such a life saver because with stamina management being big as it is that this particular ability my god i should have bought this way earlier after more of the daily grind in this game i end up fighting roy which as you knew from a little bit earlier is now our new friend and this new friend kicks my absolute ass he is a way stronger than me with a four strength two agility and three stamina also he has four active abilities meanwhile i i still only have two not that that really matters but he kicks my ass quite hard being curious what these street fights mean i go to tyler and i ask to test myself i get put up against one of the street thugs and after five rounds of fighting i am the one with the lesser health which means that sadly i lose this first roundabout of the street fights seeing as i lost against roy i have to go back against one two three guy over here luckily i don't think their stats ever increase so luckily I'm able to beat him once again. After the fight is over, Roy invites me over back to his place to just a kick back and unwind a little bit. Sadly, I decline because I do think that I have a lot more training ahead of me, but his place does open up on the world map to, for me to visit. After more of uh, the day-to-day -day grind in Punch Club, we are once again up against our friend Roy, and the second time as well, he just completely dominates me. I think he has like 70-ish health left and the second roundabout against him didn't fare so well. After losing the second fight against Roy, I decided to visit him at his house. He's just there lounging and he also has a sister present. He tells me about the sister and I really, really want to get into sparring with Roy because I think that would be a great exercise, but he tells me that his car first needs fixing and that I should just also talk to his sister. So I just end up doing both, though at a certain point you can see here that he has a little speech bubble and that is the cue to once again talk to him so that you can further along in making him your training partner it took me a little while to catch on to that after hanging out with roy i come back home to see that the suitcase is going green once again and it takes me to a warehouse just outside of the city there a person with a black mask is telling me that he also got robbed by people with animal masks having seen enough crime all around i don myself a black black hood black bandana as well and dub me the dark fist the one who shall fight crime in the city that seems to be a mechanic in this game once you have more than 200 dollars on you you get assaulted by a street thug because he wants all your money this time around i am not giving him all my money and instead i fight him and i end up winning the day-to-day -day of Punch Club just continues as I do more working out. I do more working, eating, sleeping, and there's also another fight in the amateur league that I'm into, and I end up winning that one. After that, the suitcase is once again glowing, and this is my first time fighting crime as the Dark Fist. It takes me to a motor park or a caravan park, and there I lie in wait. They have an ambush set up for one of the masked criminals and i lie in wait with them and i spring my chance but sadly this dude is way too strong for me 
and I have to give up on this initial fight be, uh, until I train a little bit more. As we go through more of the motions of Punch Club, the training, the eating, the sleeping, there is another amateur fight that I sadly end up losing. Though on a day 34, I make my way into the gym and there is one of the gym members needing help. He tells me of the warehouse where I can enter more extreme fights and it does seem a little bit enticing in order to test more of my skill. After a bit of training, I make my way to the warehouse and enter the ultimate fights. And coincidentally, I immediately have one of my first ultimate fights shortly after. With a lot of struggle, I do end up winning my first ultimate fight. And then a new or seemingly an important character makes their way. A figure in black just standing there. Now, the show host or the fighting guy tells me that he is a very important person and that he sometimes comes to look at new fighters but that only the champions get invited to an event that is really really special after the ultimate fight i am ready to face roy for a third time but he just kicks my ass again here comes the fun kicker on day 41 I finally have enough money and make my way over to the sports store in order to buy the Wing Chun uh, training device so that at home I can do more than work on just the training mat. After putting the Wing Chun training device to work and winning another amateur league fight, I am in my third ultimate fight fight. Now, uh, this time a new mechanic is introduced to me because I end up losing it and I am now injured. I've been injured, um, I, I have a broken leg and due to that, leg related exercises uh, are less efficient and it takes me four days in order to recover that. And later on, I learned that if you fight, logically, if you fight with an injury and you end up losing, then the wound reopens and you have to recover for four days uh, again. So that's a lot of fun. And so that happens to be just the case. I fight another amateur league fight and I win and nothing happens. So I'm like, oh, I think as long as I can win, the wound doesn't really matter. But boy, am I wrong because I get into another ultimate fight and what I just said happens. I lose and the wound reopens, giving me another four days of recovery time. Being re-injured makes me change my mind about the fights and I decide to not enter any fights at all until this leg is fully recovered. So after being fully recovered, I sign up for the different fights and Hello and behold, I fight the same guy in the ultimate fight, lose and get another leg injury. How nice is that? With all the downtime of trying to recover for four days, I have a lot of money. So I decide to buy the treadmill next, but I still have a lot of money on me. And so one of the three thugs comes and corners me. I'm me thinking, you know, I've beat one of you. I can beat all of you. Nope does not happen and I lose and I think I lose half my money in the process of being defeated. Now that the injuries are out of the way and me having more training equipment, I go back into the fights. Now, I end up losing the first tournament fight that I do, then I win another tournament fight, and then I think an I lose another tournament fight, but luckily I do win another ultimate fight against the guy who gave me two leg injuries. Since the ultimate goal of this initial start of the game is to become champion, I do focus more on the amateur league where I win two of the fights that are thrown at me and then I lose the third one. Sadly, after that, you get knocked down a few points, so you get against a little bit easier opponents, and I end up winning the one after that. Though, hopefully, hopefully, I should get close to that number five spot eventually. 
Having fought Roy in the Amateur League, I am surprised to see him also in the Ultimate Fights. But seeing as I've trained a lot more since meeting him, I do end up taking him down in the Ultimate Fights as well. Having won a lot more fights, having unlocked a lot more skills, and also just having my stats grow in general, I decide to don the Mask of the Dark Fist once again to see if I can beat this animal wearing criminal thug once again and we are really close he's down to 17 hp but he ends up taking me down first on day 84 it is finally time to choose a specialization because i have enough skill points for it and i go for the way of the tiger this one is agility focus based on the dodges and the counter attacks that i talked about way at the start of the video so this style suits me perfectly after winning a ultimate fight and losing one in the amateur league i go back to roy and decide to chill a little bit more in at his place i don't really understand what is going on i ask him about his sister once again he tells me that she likes me i'm not really convinced but we just chill there for a little bit until we roll into more fights after a loss in the ultimate fights and two more wins in the amateur league I'm finally third place in the Amateur League overall, which unlocks a new story point. I go back to Mick and he tells me more of my backstory, more story about my dad. Apparently, there is a mythical amulet involved that brings out the full potential of the person wearing it. Over time, several entities and clubs have protected this amulet, and through miraculous means, my dad and the three other friends were sworn to protect the amulet in this time. And Mick happened to be one of those people, and they called themselves the Punch Club. This amulet was meant to be held by the people of a punch club, but Mick made the mistake and gave it to Silver instead. As we know, Silver doesn't have it anymore, and he pawned it off to the mafia lord of this town called the Dawn. This gives me another character to meet, and that is the Dawn. Now, the Dawn says that he is fine with giving me the amulet piece back, but he is not going to do it for nothing. I have to beat the ultimate fights because only people that are worthy, only people that can work for him uh, are allowed presents in return. And so now I have another goal, which is also to become the champion of the ultimate fights. And coincidentally, I have another ultimate fight after this, but I get beaten so hard that it leaves me with a brain concussion. Yet another injury to keep in mind. Now it's probably the brain concussion and definitely not my wrong choices in min-maxing the different stats and also the different skills, but the next three fights I end up losing, sadly. After these losses, I decided to check in with Roy and after a bit of chilling, he finally agrees to be my sparring partner or my training partner. I then go and talk to his sister and she says that she likes flowers and I now have a quest to look for flowers hours all over town. After a long training session with Roy as my partner, inspiring me with every exercise that I do, I have another fight in the Ultimate League waiting for me. After winning this fight, I am in the yellow zone of the Ultimate Fight, getting me one step closer to becoming the champion of the Ultimate Fight. And surprisingly, this also leads me back to the dawn. After another win in the Amateur League, I decide to scour the city in order to find the flowers for Adrian. Now I end up finding them and I get the most overpowered buff, I think, in this part of the game where I am in love and it lasts for three days and during those three days I don't need as much food and I can train for longer because the, the feeling of love just fills me up with a whole bunch of goodness 
business. So keeping this buff up is a high priority of mine. I'm just going to scoot in here post editing and it is actually four days that the in love bonus lasts. So don't mind me when I ignorantly say three days. Since I've climbed the ladder of the ultimate fight, I am now up against a two individuals at a time. And my first match against these two individuals goes rather well. And I'm very surprised at how strong I have become. After another win in the Ultimate League, I am up against the number one in the Amateur League. And I thought I had optimistic chances, but I get absolutely destroyed. He has this like weird little sneak arrow thing ability, and it just completely drains me of all my stamina. Even though our health are on pars, our stats are on pars, he demolishes me. After that, I focus mostly on the Ultimate League because in the Amateur League, I have to fight a bunch of lower leveled fighters in order to get my ranking back up. In the Ultimate Fight, we have a two, actually three wins, followed by two losses. Then in the Amateur League, I have two more losses that I suffer. And in the Ultimate Fight, I have two losses. But weirdly enough, the second loss does upgrade me into the red tier of the Ultimate Fight. As I promised earlier, here is the exact moment that I bought the skip attacks ability. I buy it at day 161, which is so far into the game for me. But there you have it. I finally bought it and it just changes the course of the game for me because stamina management becomes so much more doable now. And in the red tier in the ultimate fight, you fight against one very powerful individual, but I managed to win two of those strong individual fights. After that, we're alternating it a little bit. We have a win in the Amateur League, another win in the Ultimate Fight. Then we have a loss in the Amateur League. We have a loss in the Ultimate Fight, but then we have two wins in the Amateur League and the second win finally, finally causes me to be the champion, which causes me to enter a new championship after I talk to Mick. Mick tells me how proud he is of me and some other stuff. And shortly after I enter the very first fight of this a championship and I managed to win that. I have another fight in the Ultimate League that I win, and that also makes me the champion of the Ultimate Fight. This leads me to talk to Don, who asks me to work for him, and I gladly accept. And he asks me to take care of the noodle vendor, or some Chinese vendor in Chinatown. But on my way there, I get stopped by Mick. And Mick tells me that this is a very dangerous road to go down to, and not in the moment I felt like I needed to fight Mick then and there if I wanted to succeed and I was like you know what let's go with the more natural route and let's just say no to Don and keep following what Mick has in store for us. So I end up going back to the Don and telling him that I will no longer be working for him. And he is very agreeable as a mafia boss. I felt like he would probably just have me shot then and there, but he's very, he's very understandable. And we just leave that out. Since I've been leveling up my stats and focusing completely on fighting, I have once again become stronger, more powerful. So I think now is the time to finally don on the the hood of the dark fist once again and finally beat this this masked guy that has been stealing animals all over the city and uh, luckily enough I do manage to take this down and continue further along into this side quest. And so far I'm two for two and that is going to be three for three because I have another fight in the championship, which I end up winning as well. 
Between the fights here and there, I've been completing the street fights on the side, and now it's time for the final street fight, which causes me to win, be announced king of the streets by Tyler, and having another achievement been granted to me. Having further along into several side quests, I once again go back to the trailer park, and there the original guy that I was talking to tells me that he has a problem with his neighbor called Bobo. There he tells me that Bobo is making a lot of loud noise, and he wants me to take care of him, or at least talk to this very big guy, which I end up doing, and he ends up challenging me to a fight. Luckily, I am way stronger than I've ever been, and this causes me to win and have some more side quests. Apparently, Bobo has his music so loud because he's bad of hearing, and he asks us to go find a hearing aid for him. Now, that is, that is a side quest that we will accept while we try and complete the game. When I go back home, the suitcase is finally flickering again, and this time it brings me to Roy's house, and he tells me that his car has been stolen, and he has no idea what they need need his car for. Once I come back from Roy's place, the suitcase in my house is glowing once again and brings me to the top of a building. There I find the same guy as previously in the motor park or the trailer park and he shows me a note that it looks like they're going to use a laser to blow up the bridge. Afterwards, I go to said bridge and see the laser with some sort of rhinoceros uh, guy. And it very much reminds me of the enemies from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. After taking down this enemy and securing the laser, I go back home, which at home I find a note that they want the laser in return for my cats. Having several cats myself, I think this is a grave situation and I immediately start training so that I can take back my cat. Once I get to the location, a giraffe or a uh, an elk kind of, of enemy is awaiting me, but I make short work of that person and I secure my cat back. Or so I thought, because then the most tragic thing in this entire game happens. The cat is walking along the ridge and then the wind blows him off and we try and save the cat, but for crying out loud, we are not able to save the cat. And I, I will not lie, I kind of thought about Alt F4-ing right then and there. Feeling the hardship and the loss of the cat, I focus on the last championship fight, which I end up winning, which is very surprising because I've won every single championship fight in a single go, which means that I've, I'm really happy with the tactic that I've developed. After becoming a champion, I am invited to more fighting because now I am the best at what I do and I'm up against other great fighters of this era. But in the process of getting ready for this fight, I end up breaking my leg. Now, Roy is kind enough to take my spot in the championship fight, but unfortunately, he gets absolutely demolished, and it seems to be a death fight because Roy does not leave alive. Standing at Roy's grave with Mick, he tells me that I have to get the amulet back no matter what, and that he has a friend in Russia that will help me train in order to prepare for the upcoming fight. I didn't know this, but at this point in the game, it completely shuts off all other side quests that you may or may not have completed. So I am cut off from fighting against the alligators. I'm cut off from wrapping up the story with the laser and the deer pe or the, the animal people. I'm completely shut off from completing those quests and I'm very sad, I wish I had known that. When I arrive in Russia, there is this very cold person that doesn't really say a whole lot to me, but I do get food provided for me and a lot of training equipment. So I get right to work. I start eating, sleeping, training, doing everything needed in order to keep my stats up. And I have two fights 
before this person opens up to me and tells me more about the about Punch Club and about the fights and the amulets, saying that he was also part of Punch Club and that the amulet was split between me and my brother. So the final fight before I face off against the Van Gieve is against the actual bear. Now, luckily, I do end up winning that, and I've shown this person that I'm fully ready to fight Ivangiv and take the medallion or the amulet back from him. Sadly, I lose the first fight against Ivangiv, but on my second try, I do end up winning because I've changed my tactic up a little bit, and luckily enough, I end up winning and taking the amulet back, progressing the story a little bit further. After coming back home with my part of the medallion and talking to Mick, I share everything with him, the things that I've learned, and Mick tells me that my brother is the guy who's been at the warehouse with the ultimate fights. He tells me that he has his own plan of getting the medallion back, winning the ultimate fights, and go getting into this big battle that is organized once a year by the guy in black. I want to follow the same path and Mick tells me that it is achievable, but that I need a manager in order to do so because the guy in black only wants the people who are famous, only wants the most famous and most well-known fighters there are. So that is the course for the next part of the game. I do as Mick says and go to the manager that he has assigned to me and I sign the contract in order to become more famous. Now there are several things that I that you can do in your career which is to shoot a movie which is basically just a gauntlet of fights that you have to do and you get more fame and money on how based on how many opponents that you actually manage to beat. You can also throw a party, which means that you spend a little bit of money to get fame, or you can spend fame on advertisements to get a little bit of money. On the second half, you have the upgrades, which means that you just get more of everything. I re I'm really interested in the daily income because having income daily is just a huge thing for me, and this is where the game takes a turn as well. In the care of this manager, not only do I have to care about my fame, but some things are also taken care for me. He has a personal chef that allows me to just eat whatever the hell I want, and he has a basement that is full of gym equipment. I don't have to buy anything more of myself. Every gym equipment that I could possibly want is in his basement. So every need is taken care of. I have a lot of money. I can, uh, th the only thing that I have to really focus on is getting that fame up so that I can win and get the attention of the guy in black. So the first thing I do is shoot a movie because that is a combination of fame and money that I'm able to get and I do end up making it a decent far though something that they don't tell you is that you end up that if you end up losing your life during the shooting of a movie so basically you lose then everything is gone you, do, you don't get a jack squat so I complete my first movie and I take it generally slow I get 200 bucks 10 skill points and 50 fame, which afterwards I end up training a little bit because that is the main thing that I train for now is to make certain that my stats keep the same way and don't degrade. My stats don't improve all that much anymore. I just do the working out so that the stats stay exactly the same as I want them to. Knowing that the love bonus is very important, I invite Adrian back to the mansion of the manager and she accepts. Now that her brother is gone, she doesn't have much tying her down to that place anyway. So she moves in with the manager and I'm able to have her there and make use of the in love bonus from time to time. After throwing a party and going through another movie, it is time for my very first fight with fame. We're fighting against Modern Mike and even though the fight is very close, he does end up winning and I lose my very first fight in this challenge for fame. Since I'm not in a very big rush, I focus on getting the upgrades first. So making certain that I have a daily income and luckily the daily income is of fame and of money. So that is very good. And I also go for all of the upgrades 
where I get more fame and more money for these specific things that I do. I throw several parties and also partake into several advertisements to get up the fame and the money needed to get all the upgrades to their max level. With most of the upgrades to the max and having trained in between, I now am ready for my second fight against Modern Mike, which I do end up winning. Since I have a daily income of fame and money, I don't need anything anymore. I can just focus on getting a lot of fame. So I roll immediately into the second fame fight against Mighty Brews. Luckily enough, I don't need a rematch and I take down Mighty Brews in the very first fight that I have against him. After that, follow the fights of Ryo and Kyun, which are obviously resemblance of Street Fighter characters, and those I also happen to win in the singular fight that I have against them, or in the first fight that I have against them. The very last person that stands in my way on this path to fame is Hulk Hogan, which is a very obvious parody to Hulk Hogan. And now that I say his name, I haven't heard that name in a very, very long time. Anyway, my first match against him doesn't go all that well, and he just completely smashes me to the ground. My second fight against Cole Kogan goes a little bit differently, and I end up winning, which makes me now the world champion. I am now officially a great warrior, and I am invited to the great and mysterious championship of the Man in Black, an invitation which I humbly accept. After arriving at the island, I also notice that my brother is there. After a bit of monologuing, after a bit of exposition, I am left to fight against my brother. A fight that is not easy, but that I do end up winning. After beating my brother and showing who is the real fighter of this family, we get a little bit more story. Apparently, the man in black is our father, and it is our father from a alternate future. According to the story, if I have it right, one of the medallions became corrupted, and as me and my brother would have grown up, one of the medallions would have corrupted one of us, and eventually, one of us would have killed the other brother. Having so, so much power, the brother who survived, which I guess is the main player, would have had the city at his feet and would have destroyed the city. Now, obviously, he didn't want that because he lost everything in the process. He lost his his fa he lost the city. He lost his sons. So what he did was he used the medallion to go back in time and fix the timeline, basically, where he shot himself in order to stop that future from happening. And so the game ends with the very famous line, I am your father. And so the credits roll as I spent 261 in-game days in order to get to this ending. Now I do try to go back to my save in to see if there's maybe some something after the credits to see if I can maybe finish up the quests that I didn't have time for before, but I am just stuck there, standing there with my brother at the tournament, and that is the very last thing that is happening in this game. Sadly, I cannot wrap up any of the quests that I've had. I would have loved to, and I'm also thinking about potentially doing a another, uh, like a second part where I basically go achievement hunting for the remaining achievements that I don't have, which I'm still thinking about, but I have done Punch Club 2. I've also completed that in a singular week. So now that I'm completely done with editing this, I will go to Punch Club 2. And perhaps once Punch Club 2 is done, I'll see if I can fit in another game. And so that is the end of Punch Club. Hope you enjoyed. This is how the game is for me. All the important bits or everything that I remember from the game, everything that I found valuable enough to share uh, in this story. A lot of it was a grind. A lot of it was definitely training and fighting. But then again, I really, really enjoyed this game. I spent a full week just playing it nonstop. And that 
that was like a month ago. So there, there you have it. That was Punch Club. Hope you enjoyed. I'd love to see y'all in the next one. Bye.